Welcome to another Kids Online video. Hello again if you're joining from the live video on Instagram and hello if you are just joining in now. We have made it through another week. In the live video John and I played a game and I thought we could play a bit of that game again. If you did join in the live though the letters for this game are going to be different so you might want to join in again and if you didn't play I'll quickly explain the rules. The game we played was we all went to go find different items beginning with a different letter so for example if I said the letter E you'd have to go run to, around the house and find an item beginning with the letter E. If you don't want to do that you could pretend to be an animal but make sure you don't break anything. You could make this a challenge in your family. So let's begin. The first letter is going to be the letter J. What could you find beginning with the letter J? I wonder, could you find a jug or a jar? Could you pretend to be an animal? You could be a jellyfish. The next letter is O. What could you find beginning with the letter O? What animal could you pretend to be? The next letter is the letter S. Could you pretend to be a snake? S or could you find something beginning with S? Oh, the next letter is the letter E. Could you pretend to be an elephant? Or could you find an egg? Make sure you don't break it though. The next letter is the letter P. What could you be beginning with P? What animal begins with P? Could you be a penguin or a parrot? Or could you find a pencil or a pen? And the last letter is H. What could you pretend to be beginning with H? Or could you, you could go grab the hoover but it might be slightly heavy. So maybe you could grab a hairband or a headband or something like that. That game was great fun. And that game spelt out a word. It actually spelt out somebody's name. Can anyone guess whose name it was? If you watched the live and you would already know who our story was about today. The name was Joseph. So our story was all about Joseph. I'm going to read the story again, so if you already heard the story in the live, you can skip past this bit and get to the craft activity. But if you didn't, I'm going to read it again. I have permission to read this from the Christian Harper Collins Foundation. The pictures will appear up on the screen. This story is called The Forgiving Prince. Jacob had 12 sons, but of all of his sons, Joseph was his favourite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with colours of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow robes too. Then to make matters worse, Joseph kept having these special dreams. I dreamt I was the greatest. I was the king. Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that's telling your brothers things like that isn't very good. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. They wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams. And one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore up Joseph's robe off him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him to a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling them that Joseph was dead. That's the end of the dreamer, they thought, but they were wrong. God had magnificent dreams for Joseph's life. And even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, Joseph would use it. God would use it all to make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, things were not looking too good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and from his dad. Then he got blamed for something he didn't do. Even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown into jail. But God had not left 
Joseph. One night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about cows gobbling up fat cows. What on earth did that mean? He didn't know. But Joseph was a dream expert, so sent for him. It means a famine is coming. Joseph explained there won't be enough food. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food and everyone was hungry. God's special family was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, Joseph's brother, they would starve to death. So Joseph's brothers travelled to Egypt to buy food. They came and knelt before the new prince. His brothers didn't know that the prince was Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it, Joseph, his brothers were afraid. They had wronged Joseph, they had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph was certainly punished them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and his eyes filled with tears. Even though his brothers had hurt him and hated him and wanted him dead, in spite of everything, he couldn't stop loving them. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said, behind what you were doing. Underneath everything that had happened, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish them. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break, like Joseph's. He would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished, even though he had done nothing wrong. But God was using everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of the whole world. That's a great story. And it got me thinking about dreams. Joseph had some crazy dreams in that story, and they came true. And he helped Pharaoh with his dreams. And sometimes we can have crazy dreams. And not all of them do come true, but God has dreams of us and we can have dreams. And during this time, we might be feeling a little bit sad. We might be dreaming of the times that we can play with our friends again, or we can see our family. And the other day, I was chatting to my friend, Ella. Ella, who works at church, and she had a great idea of something she's doing. She's created a dreams jar of all the things that she wants to do after lockdown and I thought we could make one too. So there'll be a video next on how we can make this and what you could put inside your own dream jar. All you will need for the dream jar craft is a jar, some stickers, some pens, some paper, whatever you would like to decorate your jar with. Maybe you have an empty jar at home that you could wash out and use. The thing that's missing from the dream jar is dreams. So maybe you'd like to get some spare bits of paper and write your dreams and pop them in. Like I said before, God can give us big dreams. He has dreams for your life. Like he gave Joseph dreams and that's called a prophetic dream. But also we can have dreams like we want to go see our friends and our family. So there's different types of dreams, but you can pop whatever sorts of dreams you like in your jar. So one dream I'm gonna write 
is that I would like to go for lunch with my friends again soon after lockdown. What's it gonna look like? So don't forget to send the pictures of those in and my email address will come up on the screen or you can send them to the kids' Instagram. It'll be great to see what they look like. And if you don't want to make a dream jar, that's okay. Maybe you could make a coat like Joseph got. Got lots of different colours. Maybe you could stick tissue paper and you can send them in too. I thought to finish this video, we could pray. One theme in the story of Joseph was all about forgiveness. Joseph forgave his brothers, even though they had sold him. Could you imagine if one of your siblings tried to sell you? My brother actually tried when I was little. He told my parents that he wanted to sell me, but luckily it didn't work out. But sometimes people can do things to us and they can hurt us and they can make us feel really sad. But we need to forgive them, which can be really, really tricky. I know forgiving people can be hard. I find it hard, but we remember that Jesus died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and so that we could forgive others. So maybe someone's hurt you this week and you just need to forgive them. Maybe you could write it down and how it made you feel and then you could screw it up and throw it in the bin. Like you're giving that thing to God and you are forgiving that person. So now I'm gonna pray and then I will see you next week on Friday on YouTube at the same time at five for another video. So if you want to join me in praying, maybe you could close your eyes, put your hands together, but you don't have to do that because you pray anytime, anywhere, but this just helps me concentrate. Dear God, thank you for the story of Joseph and thank you for the dreams that he had and thank you for the dreams that you put in our lives and in our hearts. Help us to have more wonderful dreams during this time and Lord, help us to forgive. Maybe there's someone that we need to forgive today or this week. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to forgive them like you forgive us. Amen. See you again soon.